I think it's funny how the religious have to keep responding to anyone who is losing their faith, mostly to comfort the theists remaining that everybody that leaves your cult is just doing it all wrong. It's just that the religious show us far more about themselves and their fear than they do providing any kind of good answers, and today we're going to look at some of that. So please pay attention because this is important. Today, we're going to see what has to be one of the most pathetic videos I think I've ever had the misfortune of watching, and that's kind of saying a lot. This is on the Elisa Childers podcast, and I have no idea who this guy is. He's just so completely, utterly, and totally deluded that it's hard not to feel at least a little bit of sympathy. For any Christians who are watching along today, Please pay attention, because this is what you look like. You might not be this absurd, he's kind of a hard act to follow, but this is really what the religious look like to everyone on the outside. So, without further ado, let's get started. I can study and study and do all this I want, but at the end of the day, no worldview is going to give me omniscience and certainty. See, there's your problem. You are worried about worldviews and not reality. And that's why I think you're just so screwed up. Now, this is something that I'm seeing a lot these days, more so than ever before, as far as I can remember anyhow. People are treating worldviews like they're a pair of shoes. You just get to pick the one that you like, and that's the one that you get. Except that's stupid. The real world doesn't change because you've decided this pair of socks is more comfortable than that one. That's why worldviews are utterly irrelevant. The world is what the world is, no matter how you feel about it. You can't just say, well, as a Christian or as a Muslim. You have to deal with things as they demonstrably are, not as you wish they could be. And that's why when anyone comes up with, well, from a Christian perspective, you know that they're an idiot. You don't get to pick the way that reality works. It is what it is. Grow up. One of the main questions that I get when I'm speaking is a lot of times family members of people who have deconstructed or who are in deconstruction. What would your advice be to those family members who love Jesus and they, they don't really understand what's happening to their family members and their loved ones, what would your advice to them be? Deal with it? I mean, we know what she's trying to get at. She wants some profound advice for how to haul these people back into the fold, something that's simple to do, requires almost no effort, and never, ever, ever fails. But that's just not the real world, is it? Not that these people tend to care. Deconstructing is the new big thing. And granted, for myself, I don't see where that would be all that useful. Who cares why you think a thing or why you're prone to believe a thing? It really only matters if it's objectively true. So long as you are firmly committed to believing as many true things as possible and as few false things and knowing how to tell the difference between the two, you're going to be fine. You may not be happy all the time, but being happy all the time is an unrealistic expectation to begin with. You don't need any of the obnoxious, touchy-feely crap that so many people seem to want these days. Just go with reality. Constantly reevaluate your positions to make sure that they are the best supported that you can find. If not, give that up and move on to what is best supported. Your emotional attachments, they just don't matter. It's really not that hard when you come to grips with the real world. Give it a shot. Ugh. You know, if I could even just answer that question, even before I do say just something else as it relates to mm. the faith like a child, it was because I had to end my quest with omniscience. 
So, let me get this straight. You're just spouting meaningless nonsense to give yourself more time to come up with an actual answer. You'll see that one a lot, too. Before I answer that, let me bring up this entirely different, entirely irrelevant thing, because hell if I know what I want to say. It's funny to just watch how the religious talk, and really, it's how anyone talks, because people have all of these defense mechanisms to avoid looking dumb. Usually it doesn't work, but at least we understand why they do it. Anyway, let's get back to his sideline. Maybe letting him ramble will get us a better answer in the end. I wouldn't be betting on that, though. Um, the temptation to, th to think that I could ever find all the satisfactory answers anyway, mm. and to realize that doubt's not a Christian problem, it's a human problem. And in the absentee of certainty, there will always be room for doubt. The question is which worldview best closes the doubt gap. Mm. And it didn't work. He still looks stupid. So let's address this really quickly. Doubt doesn't matter. As he said, it's a human thing, and then he immediately tries to avoid being human. Instead, he's looking for comfort. He can't just accept that doubt is something that we all have to deal with. No, he wants to be rid of doubt because doubt makes him unhappy. It makes him uncomfortable. Well, too bad for you. Being happy isn't the same thing as being right, and that's what we should all be striving for, at least as best as we can. We might never be completely right, we might never have all of the answers, but taking on a ridiculous overlay that convinces us to stop looking, that's far more damaging than any amount of doubt can bring. You need to just grow the hell up. It really can't be that difficult. And realizing that if Adam and Eve could doubt in paradise, how much more are we susceptible to in paradise lost? And so I found myself looking at my ornamental plum tree in my backyard, and I was considering it, and I was asking questions about the plum tree. I did that once. It's how I came up with Bobo the tree god. Granted, he wasn't a plum tree, I really have no idea what he was at all, but where these people go so horribly wrong all the time is where they say, well, I want answers. Cool, but that doesn't mean that you get answers. That doesn't mean that you have the answers that you want right now. Wanting a thing is not the same as having that thing. Just because you want it, that doesn't mean you get it. You have to learn to deal with life's little disappointments, right? Yet the religious seem to have a big problem with that. And it's not just them, of course. Just look at the modern world today, because there's a lot of people out there who are just wishing that they had all the answers. And when they don't, most of the time, they just make something up. And I'm sure you see that all the time, too. Yet some people will say, well, of course they do. It's a human thing. No, it's just a lazy thing. It is the fastest way, without having to do any actual work on your own, to get somewhere where you want to go, without actually having to do the actual work to achieve anything. It's not something that anyone ought to be proud of, yet far too many people are. Um, how deep are the roots right now? Um, how much water would it take at bare minimum for it to survive? How many ounces of water has fallen on this ever since it's been planted? Um, how many hands touch the original seed? Uh, and I was going on and on. How big is this going to grow? How long will this last? Um, what kind of a windstorm would knock the leaves off? Well, I can tell you what it took to knock Bobo over, and that was quite a storm. Yet, here's where he's showing that he doesn't comprehend basic rationality. He's asking questions, being uncomfortable with the lack of answers, at least answers that he likes, and then figuring, you know, what the hell, let's just make something up. But your comfort doesn't matter. It just doesn't. I know you really wished that you had those answers. And for some of those questions, we could, in theory, find out. But generally speaking, just because you wish you knew, that doesn't mean that you do. You need to figure out how to get past that. Because otherwise... You're just acting like a child. Um, how many branches are on this? This, I, So I was tweaking, right? And you know what? I, I came to this moment where it was just like, 
I can't even plumb the depths of my ornamental plum tree. Mm. And I'm overwhelmed with the fact that I can't come to all the conclusions that I want on God. And I started just thinking like, if I was to walk away from Christianity, I would just inherit another set of unforeseen questions eventually that will yeah. become my doubts. And so what I'm struggling with is my finitude. Too bad. This is an excellent example of what the religious do wrong. Now, like I said, it isn't just them, but we're trying to stick close to the topic at hand. They are afraid of reality. They really are. They're terrified of the real world. They're terrified of themselves. They're terrified of each other. They can't handle being human or having human frailties. They hate it all, and they think that so long as they can tell themselves comforting stories that they just yank straight out of their assholes, that will magically make everything okay. And they're wrong. They just are. What I'm struggling with is my mortality. What I'm struggling with is my limitations. What I'm struggling with is my weaknesses. And I can study and study and do all this I want. But at the end of the day, no worldview is going to give me omniscience and certainty. Which is why you invented a magical father figure in the sky. That's religion for you. Here's everything that I really wish I could be. Okay, but you're not. You're just not. Come back down to earth and deal with it. They're going to say, well, here's everything I hate about myself. And then I'm going to pretend that this God thing I made up makes it all better. But that's not how that works, is it? If you want to get better, and there are some things that you simply cannot fix, not now, not ever, then you have to get up off your ass and do some work on your own. Welcome to reality. But these people don't want reality. They want an eternally comforting, magical, happy land where they have no cares in the world and no doubts. They just want to behave like little immature children and put everything on their imaginary friend. Except from everything that we can tell, their imaginary friend is just that. Imaginary. Time to put away childish things and deal with the world as it is. We can do it. Why can't they? And so the thing that looked most appealing, it certainly wasn't atheism to me, uh, it was agnosticism. Dude, who cares what appeals to you? This is the problem. These idiots are so busy looking for things that make them happy that they can't see anything that's actually true. Truth has nothing at all to do with your fee-fees. What's the speed of light? Uh... Uh, I don't know, but if it doesn't make me happy, I'm not going to agree. Yeah, fuck you. You don't just get to reject actual reality because your pathetic feelings are hurt. This is what religion does to you. Not just religion, of course, because, holy crap, look what's going on out there these days. These are just not smart people, and this is why they're not smart. For any theists out there who are watching this video and rolling their eyes about this total dipshit, this is how you look to people on the outside. But I'm looking for comfort and certainty. Too bad. Rent a clue. This is just stupid. It really is. Because I felt like I could sit in Critic's Corner and just be like, you can't know, you can't know, you can't know. And I had to come to a conclusion with, okay, why not be an agnostic then? Because you don't even know what that word means. This is another one of those terms that the religious have just arbitrarily reinvented because it really hurts their feelings that so many people, an ever-increasing number these days, don't take their imaginary friends seriously. Well, at least they don't disbelieve, they just don't know. Except that's not what agnosticism is. It's really obvious that they never actually talk to any actual agnostics, because actual agnostics would just laugh their asses off. It's the same reason they don't want to talk to atheists. They only want to talk to their own straw man version of atheists, the ones who behave the way that they've been told all along that we do. And it's really too bad for them that it's a complete fantasy which is why so many theists come into the comments section, say a lot of really stupid stuff, and then run away when they find out that people in the comments aren't actually the way they've been lied to and told that they are. 
And I came to the place where I said, well, you know what? Even the agnostic is certain about one thing. He's certain there is an explanation. He just doesn't know it. That's not even true. There may not be an explanation, at least not one that anyone is willing to accept. Well, anyone except atheists, by and large, who aren't looking for emotional comfort. We just want to know the facts to the best of our current capability to discover them. Because here's something else that these people don't seem to comprehend. Life isn't all about you. It's not about making you happy. It's not about keeping you content. It's not about making you feel good because you're so incredibly special that the world revolves around your head. That is not the reality that you live in. But these people, they don't want to live in reality, do they? They are terrified of reality. That's why they spend their time concocting these asinine worldviews and playing make-believe because they can't handle the actual real world that's right there in front of them. What a bunch of idiots. So what would you rather do, Bobby? Would you rather give yourself um, to the best explanation or just sit in Critic's Corner and say you can never know what that explanation is. I'd rather go where the evidence leads, regardless of how that makes me feel. The truth is the truth. It doesn't matter if it makes me happy. It doesn't matter if it makes me sad. It only has to be true. This is another thing that really bugs me about the religious. Notice how he asked what she'd rather do. Well, who cares what she'd rather do? Your preferences mean nothing. It's like the religious asking me, and they've actually done this a lot, well, wouldn't you rather live in a universe run by an all-powerful, all-loving God? Who cares? The only thing that matters is what kind of universe I actually live in. My preferences don't mean anything. If there is an all-powerful, loving God, fine so long as that's what's really going on. If there's a terrible, evil, sadistic God who's going to burn everybody forever in a lake of fire, well, okay, that's fine too. Not like I can do anything about it regardless. I just want to know the truth. That's it. Full stop. The truth. What the hell is wrong with these imbeciles? Because that person believes there's an explanation, they just remain skeptical. And I just, like a child, said, I'm going to give myself to the best explanation. It's Christianity. It's the resurrection. It's you. No, that's the explanation you like. It's the one that makes you feel warm and fuzzy inside. Fuck you. Your feelings are never, ever, ever, ever going to matter to anybody but you. They don't tip the scales of reality one bit. You have to live in the world that actually exists, and they don't do that. They don't want to. It's why I ask, how do you know that? And they never, ever, ever have an answer. It's why they rely on faith so heavily, because actual evidence doesn't get them where they are emotionally invested to go. It's just like talking to children. It really is. This is one of the most ludicrous displays ever. Ever. And inside, this is what they're all doing. How sad is that? And so to parents, I would say at the end of the day, maybe just help your kids to know things like what we've talked about here. What? How to be stupid? How to curl up in a corner and suck your thumb and keep your eyes closed lest actual reality make its way inside? Is that what you're talking about? These people are idiots. They really are. There is nothing in what this jackass has said that's worth considering for an instant, much less basing your entire life on. What the hell is wrong with these people? Somebody seriously needs to call the men in the white coats. That there's questions in all the worldviews. That apologetics, we often think of, we're on the defense. My goodness, I feel like other belief systems they're the ones that really need to be on the defense. Yet, we don't, right? Because we're not staking out an emotionally comforting position and then just demanding that anything that doesn't fit into our little square holes, it can't possibly be real. No, we just say, okay, if that's what the evidence supports, we'll go with that. 
No fear, no hesitation. Reality is real. Accept it as such and just move on. Keep your eyes out for more evidence and be willing to change your mind when things go in a different direction. Don't pretend that you have all the answers because you don't. Your comfort doesn't mean anything. Grow the hell up. It's really not that hard. Um, I would say that we're living in a time because of social media and these kids are being put into algorithms that maybe helping them to be aware of the messages that are feeding them because they're liking things and they're being fed information that is reinforcing a narrative for them. And so we're stuck in a matrix mm -hmm. that's divide, further dividing us apart. And we have to become aware of the world that we're living in mm -hmm. and the information that's coming our way. And as moms and dads help recognize, help them recognize the influences in their life and how it's paying attention so they can come out and take a, come out and take a bigger picture of the objective world. That's good. That's very good. I just kind of let them run on there at the end because really, what else can you say? The problem here is that he's just wrong. Well, I'll be honest, he's both right and wrong, but not in the way that he'd like to think. Yes, social media can be a big influence over people who don't use their brains to think. They're only there to consume uncritically. But you know who's been using that tactic forever, don't you? Religion. Listen to what you're told in a particular religious echo chamber. Don't ask questions. Don't have doubts. It's true because we say so. So there. This is the model that religion has always gone by. Now, maybe they have a right to be upset that social media has cottoned on to their scam, I don't know, but it is a scam, and religion has always been that. These people just don't like it that their con job is now being used elsewhere, and it's cutting in on their action. It's why religion has always wanted to keep their people really close, because holy crap, they might see something out there that religion just can't explain away. This was both some of the most open that I've seen the religious be, but also the most sad. It shows exactly what they're doing wrong. Not that they would admit it, but it also shows them for what they actually are. Scared, pathetic little children, terrified of the real world, and desperate to cling to their imaginary friend's apron strings because, I mean, what else are they going to do if they actually have to stand on their own two feet? Christians, this is you. It is whether you like it or not. It's dumb. Don't be dumb. You have to be better than that. At least try.